Okay everyone, today I'm going to be talking about time crystals. Now we all know what regular crystals look like. In a crystalline form, you have atoms that have a repeating structure. So they have a pattern that repeats itself in space. But what time crystals are, are patterns that repeat themselves in time. Now the idea for a time crystal came from a man named Dr. Wilczek in 2010. He was preparing a lecture for one of his classes and thinking about crystals and how they repeat in space. And it didn't seem illogical to think about something that also repeats in time. So he started thinking, since there's such a thing as crystals in space, a repeating pattern in space, why isn't there such a thing as time crystals, basically atoms that repeat their pattern in time? So they're one way one time and they're a different way a different time. Well, it turns out he was right. So here's what a time crystal would look like. So the first thing about a time crystal you'll see is that it has a repeating pattern in space. So you can see the crystalline structure here. It's definitely due to a repeating pattern of atoms inside of it that form this crystalline structure. But this also has a repeating pattern in time. Now watch if I just let this sit in my hand loosely. So the crystals are spontaneously flipping their position in time. So there's a repeating pattern with no energy input into it. So when regular atoms crystallize, they spontaneously organize into columns and rows in a three-dimensional lattice. And depending on what types of atoms they are, they create different structures. So the electromagnetic forces between the atoms arrange themselves into a structure where each atom occupies what's called a lattice point. So when an atom isn't in a crystal, it can be in any continuous place in space. But when it's inside of a crystal, it has discrete places that it can be. It can't just be anywhere it wants like when it's outside of the crystal. So what we say a crystal does is it breaks the symmetry of space. Now since we know that space and time are inevitably linked together, that would mean that it would make sense that if crystals can have things that are discrete in space, then maybe they have points that are discrete in time as well. They can't occur anywhere in time, but only in two different places. So the properties of a time crystal are that the atoms in the crystal occupy a repeating pattern in space and also a repeating pattern in time. So that at one point they're at one place and at another point in time they're at another place and that repeats in time indefinitely. So a time crystal breaks the symmetry of time much in the way that a normal crystal breaks the symmetry of space. Now a weird thing happens when you break symmetry in physics. What that actually means is that you're actually breaking the laws of conservation. So in physics we have these conservation laws that state that energy must be conserved and momentum must be conserved. For example, in the regular world, we know that the conservation of momentum is always conserved. Momentum is always conserved in any physical reaction. But in the crystal world, that's not always true. If your world is now inside of the crystal, you can have two vibrations traveling in the same direction, and when they actually collide together, they can go in the opposite direction. So this is called crystalline momentum, and crystalline momentum isn't always conserved. So because crystals break symmetry in space, it means that they're also breaking the law of conservation of momentum inside of them. And the same thing occurs for time crystals, but instead of breaking spatial symmetry, they're actually breaking temporal symmetry. For example, you can see when I set this crystal down, that it just starts moving on its own. So basically, we've created something that has perpetual motion. I'm not inputting any energy into it, but it's moving. So the law of conservation of energy is broken with a time crystal. Okay, so what I've just shown you actually isn't a time crystal. This is what's called a space crystal, or just a basic crystal. And I was actually moving this with a magnet. So why did I make a fake time crystal? Because the thing is, time crystals really do exist in real life. They're just too small right now to see. There's no time crystals that are as big as this in real life yet. In 2016, scientists from the University of Maryland created the world's very first time crystals made out of 10 ytterbium ions. So what they did is they had these 10 ytterbium ions in a row and they had this repeating structure. And what they did is they pulsed these ytterbium ions with a laser. 
and they checked the spin of the electrons in the ytterbium with time. And what happened is the spin of the electrons flipped at a regular frequency. But what's weird about this is it doesn't match the frequency of the input energy. So basically they input energy at a lower frequency and this flipping of the electrons comes out at a higher frequency. Now this is actually really weird because they relate it to tapping on a tub of jello. So imagine that you have a cup of jello and you're tapping on it and you see it wiggle every time you tap it. But now imagine that you're tapping it, but it wiggles at a higher frequency than your tap. So let's say you're tapping it like this, tap, 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 but the wiggle, the jiggling of the jello is going tap, 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 tap. So basically the frequency of the wiggling that you're getting out of it is higher than the frequency that you're putting into it. That's never happened before. And a different set of scientists in a totally different setup also made their own time crystals. So now it has been very firmly confirmed that time crystals do exist. Now how useful they are is a different story, because as of right now we're not able to extract any energy from them, but what's weird about it is it seems like we're getting more energy out of them than we're putting into them. So, so far time crystals, we know they're real, we know they exist, we've actually created them, but what it all means we're not sure yet. So the study of time crystals has created a whole new field of physics called non-equilibrium physics. And what this is, is usually we study things at an equilibrium state, thermodynamic equilibrium, where everything has kind of settled down into its lowest energy state. But in non-equilibrium physics, you constantly perturb the system and see what happens. So just like these time crystals, you're constantly perturbing it and you're seeing how they react. Okay, before I end, just to be clear, this is a real crystal, but it is not a time crystal that I used here. This was a simulation in order to teach something about time crystals and how they would look if we could see a large one. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.